A reading from Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at, at his feet weeping, began to wet his face with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him, and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 dinar and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say amongst themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the word of the Lord. In December of 1944, in the Second World War, the focus of the whole world was on Western Europe and the invasion of the Allied armies headed towards Germany. But then the Germans had a huge counteroffensive that almost worked. It became known as the Battle of the Bulge, and their strategy was pretty unusual. Here's what they did. Several days before the attack, German soldiers who were dressed in American uniforms, along with American jeeps, parachuted behind American lines. The German soldiers carried no weapons. They had one mission to drive along all of the roads and to change all of the signposts that were given directions to strategic towns and locations and villages. Change those signposts. Because of their actions, and they changed those signs around, deadly consequences followed. Whole battalions of Allied soldiers were lost trying to find their way across the countryside because the signposts were either taken down or they were pointing in the wrong direction. I'm preaching a series of sermons on fake spiritual news, on spiritual signs that are pointed in the wrong direction for us today. Fake spiritual news number one a couple of weeks ago was this, you can have it all. Just snap your fingers and whine and stomp your fingers and you can have whatever you want. Jesus said the door was a narrow door. That was fake news. The second fake news last Sunday was, you can never be too rich or too thin. That's fake news. Our weaknesses, our thorns in the flesh can actually help us and make us into better and stronger people. And now we come to fake spiritual news number three. It says, if you do the crime, you do the time. I want us to focus today for a few minutes on the awesome truth of the Bible that so many people in our culture today just don't understand and they don't get. Here it is. Almighty God offers to each one of us complete and total forgiveness for all of our sins. Forgiveness. Two young brothers, Harry and James, had finished supper and they were playing until bedtime. Then Harry hit James with a stick. And they got into this big fight with tears and pushing and shoving and yelling at each other. I mean, they were angry at each other by the time mom was putting them to bed. Their mother said, now, James, listen to me. Before you go to bed tonight, you have to forgive your brother. You have to. James thought about that for a few minutes, and he said, well, okay, I'll forgive him tonight. If I don't die before I wake, though, he better look out in the morning." Is that rain? Wow. Aren't you glad you're inside? <laughs> the whole concept of forgiveness somehow just doesn't register with us today. And I'm talking about complete and total forgiveness. 
Our gospel reading for today is a really good story about a woman who had a terrible reputation. She came to Jesus one day as he was eating at the home of Simon the Pharisee. She obviously loved Jesus. She was so extravagant in pouring this expensive perfume on his feet. The Pharisee, Simon, was just horrified by this. He thought to himself, huh, if this man is really a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is who has done this. He would know that she is a sinner. Well, it was pretty clear to Jesus that Simon was thinking about this. So he told this story about forgiveness and about loving other people. And then he pointed to this woman with a terrible past, a bad reputation, and a bleak future. And here's what the Gospel of Luke says. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now I have to say, that whole concept goes against everything in our culture today that says very loudly and very clearly, if you do the crime, you must do the time. That's certainly true in the world out there. I did some research this past week. Guess which country in the world has the highest incarceration rate of any country? Any guess? Let me hear United States. Russia is number two with the highest incarceration rate, and you are correct in saying the United States has the highest incarceration rate of any country in all of the world. It has 724 people in prison for every 100,000 people. If you do the crime, you do the time. Guess what state has the highest incarceration rate in the country? Mm -hmm. I can't understand anything that you're saying, but I know you're saying something. <laughs> it used to be Louisiana. For years and years, it was Louisiana until this past July. Oklahoma has taken over as the number one spot with the highest incarceration rate. It's certainly true out in the country. If you do the crime, you have to do the time. But I want to tell you today that doesn't have to be true in our spiritual lives. I'm so thankful today that that is fake spiritual news because there is someone who has already done our time, and his name is Jesus Christ who took the punishment for us on that cross, the Son of God. Our scripture reading for today points to that truth. Luke chapter 7, verse 47, Jesus pointed to a sinful woman with a dark past and a bleak future, and he said, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. She didn't deserve it. She didn't earn it. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. I'm a big fan of Dennis the Menace. I like Dennis the Menace and The Born Loser and Marmaduke. Those are the three that I like reading with the comic strips each morning. I clipped one of Dennis the Menace years ago where it shows Dennis kneeling down in prayer at his bedside. His hands are folded, his eyes are looking up to heaven, and he says, Lord, I'm here to turn myself in. <laughs> if that's our attitude, if that's our spirit, if we trust in Christ and we turn away from our sins, the scripture says that all of our past is completely forgiven, totally forgiven. Those sins are gone forever. Now, isn't that great news? I've heard people say over the years, and it irritates me, oh, there's nothing for me at church. I don't like all that judgmental stuff and all that hellfire stuff. I don't like all that. Are you kidding me? I'm talking about the greatest news in the whole world. That we can be forgiven, completely and totally forgiven for things in our past. That's our hope and that's our faith that we can make a new beginning. I like the story about an older man. He went to his doctor for a checkup. The next day, his doctor saw the man walking down the street with a beautiful young woman, and he was laughing and laughing. And so the doctor called him on the phone right away and said, hey, what's up? What's the deal? Who's that young lady that you were with? And why all the laughing? 
And the older man said, well, doctor, I was, I was just doing exactly what you told me to do. You said, get a hot mama and be cheerful. No, said the doctor. I said, you have a heart murmur and be careful. <laughs> that man was ready for a new beginning. So many people today, so many Christians today hold on to their sins and they never take steps towards having this new beginning. Even though God has already forgiven them, they don't forgive themselves. They hold on to that fake spiritual news that says, I've done the crime, so I have to do the time spiritually. And they beat themselves up over something wrong that was done last year, 10 years ago, a lifetime ago. James Garfield was the 20th president of our country. He was a lay preacher for his church, the Disciples of Christ. He was a brilliant man. In the year 1880, James Garfield was elected the President of the United States. Six months later, he was shot in the back with a pistol. He never lost consciousness. At the hospital, the doctor probed the wound with his little finger, trying to find the bullet. He probed and he searched and he looked, but he couldn't find it. So he got a silver-tipped probe, and he kept on looking and probing to find the bullet. President Garfield was taken back to Washington, D.C. The summer heat was terrible. They tried to keep the president comfortable, but he was growing weaker and weaker. Several doctors, a whole team of doctors, tried to find the bullet, probing that wound over and over. In desperation, they asked Alexander Graham Bell, who was working on something called the telephone, to try to find the bullet inside the president's body. He came, he tried, but he failed. Three months later, President James Garfield died. Not from the wound, but he died from infection. Historians actually claim this today. All of that constant probing, trying to help the president, is what really killed him. The probing did that. I want to tell you, the same thing can happen to us this day, those of us who keep dwelling on our sins. We can't seem to let them go and give those things up to God and we keep on probing and probing and we don't let it go. The great Christian writer and thinker C.S. Lewis wrote these words, pretty profound. He said, I believe that if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, it is almost like setting up ourselves as a higher court than him. So today... Because of Jesus Christ, it's possible to find forgiveness and to start life all over again. Psalm 32 begins with these words, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. What a marvelous statement. Blessed is he whose transgressions, whose sins, are forgiven. The example of starting over. And finding forgiveness and a second chance is found all through Holy Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. In the Old Testament, Jacob was a liar and a cheater, but he was forgiven. Moses was angry all the time, and he committed murder. Rahab was a prostitute. King David committed murder and adultery. Jonah ran away from God. Paul persecuted Christians, and Simon Peter denied that he even knew who Jesus was. But they all found forgiveness. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18, has a great invitation. Come now, says the Lord, let us reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. That's the promise, that's the invitation of Holy Scripture, the chance to start over. In the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter, it's one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. It's an amazing story. This angry and judgmental crowd drags before Jesus a woman caught in the act of committing adultery. They had stones in their hand, and they wanted to stone this woman to death. And they asked Jesus what they should do. Jesus looked around at them, and he said, Those of you who have never sinned, throw the first stone." One by one, they dropped those stones and they walked away until only Jesus and the woman was there. 
Jesus approached her and he said, Woman, where are they? Is there no one left to condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. Then Jesus said, and think about his words, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He gave to her a second chance at life. That's what the scripture says God offers to do for us. The Apostle John said in the little letter of 1 John, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the promise of God. In a few minutes, we'll say the Apostles' Creed that has the phrase, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I'll say it again. Isn't that great news? That's the best news in all the world. This is a place of hope and mercy. It's a place that we find the saving grace of Jesus Christ that reaches down to us right where we are, regardless of who we are and what we've done. He pointed to that sinful woman in the home of Simon the Pharisee who had a dark past and a bleak future, and he said, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. A young boy was given his very first slingshot by his grandparents. He spent several days at their home and he was practicing with that slingshot out in the woods, but he could never hit his target. Then one day in grandma's backyard, he spotted her pet duck. He didn't think about it. He quickly got that slingshot and bang, that stone connected and that poor duck was dead. The boy panicked. He didn't know what to do. He, he was so frightened, he ran to the duck. He quickly hid the duck in the wood pile, and he looked up, and guess what? His sister was watching. Sally had seen the whole thing, but she didn't say a word. Later on that day, after lunch, Grandma said, Sally, come on over and help me put up the dishes. Sally said, oh, no, Johnny told me that he wanted to help in the kitchen. <laughs> didn't you, Johnny? And then she whispered to him, don't forget about the duck. And so Johnny put up the dishes. About four o'clock that afternoon, Grandma asked the kids if they wanted to go fishing. Grandpa said, I'm sorry. That would be Grandma. Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally to help get supper ready. Sally smiled and said, oh, no, that's all taken care of. Johnny wants to help with supper this evening, don't you, Johnny? And then she whispered again, don't forget the duck. And so Johnny stayed and Sally went fishing. Finally, after several days, Johnny just couldn't take it anymore. He had enough of doing Sally's work. And so he went to his grandmother and he confessed the whole thing to her, that he had killed the duck. And the story ends in this amazing way. His grandmother smiled, gave him a great big hug and said, I know, Johnny, I know. I was standing at the window, and I saw the whole thing. Because I love you, I forgave you. I wondered how long Sally would make a slave out of you. <laughs> this morning, don't let guilt and sin and unforgiveness make a slave out of you. From this day on, it's possible to be free and clean and filled with God's Spirit. He pointed to a sinful woman with a terrible past and a bleak future, and he said, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. I believe in grace. I believe in second chances. Somebody else has done your time. His name is Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that this is a place of mercy place of grace, a place that we can hear a word of hope and good news. Lord, I pray this day that you will help us to look to the cross and to know that at the cross there is the answer for everything in our lives, including the times that we have tripped and fallen and sinned. Forgive us this day, help us to hold on to you, and to give you our thanks for a second chance at life. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.